Hello, my loyal subjects, and welcome! So, anyway, the next part we're going to deal with is actually setting up a nice base for us to work with later. Because what we're actually going to be doing later is actually building up, like, a whole material layering workflow around creating our lovely reference, which I don't think I have up anymore, if I remember. Nope, I don't think I do. So yeah, anyway, I dropped the reference um, somewhere. Anyway, so anyway, we're going to be building a lovely base color for this. We're going to be building um, just a nice base to work from, you know, a nice base material that we're going to layer on and finally get this thing looking like a full material. And I'm just going to talk about how you can actually snowball this, because up to this point, we've worked mostly with the height. And we've also worked with the ambient occlusion, which I'm going to very quickly dump into another graph. So in this case, underscore AO. And then I'm going to right click and create output nodes, create input nodes, plug in height, plug in height, and then go over here and relative parent. And there we are. Done. Amazing. Drag that out. There it is in all of its gloriousness. Not necessarily super controllable, but at least it's there. So anyway, there, a little bit nicer, a little bit more convenient, and uh, now we, let's actually set up our base material. So when I looked at my reference, one of the main things with bricks is that they vary depending on what brick it is. So each brick will have a slightly different color to it, and we want to start off with this. Later on we'll add effects that carry across bricks, and it'll make them more monotone looking, so we actually want to start off with a little bit of difference between them. So in order to do this, we need to be able to tell what bricks are which. And this is where we might want to add an optional output to this. We want to have like an optional extra bit of information off of this. So I'm going to jump over here to height. And there's actually a cool thing you can do. So with this brick generator, there's a way to turn the brick generator into something that can actually tell you where certain, basically randomized per brick. But I'm just going to start off, I'm going to copy and paste the brick generator. And this will, notice we've exposed all the properties on this. This means both of them are now wired up to the same properties. So if I change one's bricks value, the amount of bricks on one, it'll change the amount of bricks on the other. However, I just want an image that it has like a random grayscale value for each brick, because then we can use a gradient map and do some awesome stuff. So first I want to get rid of this bevel, um, because I want it to be just like a mask. So I'm going to go here to bevel, I'm going to go over to this little drop down, I'm going to say reset to default value. As you can see this will bring it back, and I'm just going to drop the bevel down to zero, and we get these lovely little panels. So anyway, that's that. Next I'm going to go down here to slope, I'm actually going to reset to default value. This way we just get an even distribution, and now I'm going to go and reset the height to default value, and I'm just going to up the variation. What this will do what this will actually do is it'll give us a bunch of random tiles that we can then attach colors to later. And you'll notice this is, uh, this is in the exact same pattern as a brick generator, and even if we change the settings, this pattern will also change. So these two currently match. I'm going to right click, I'm going to create output nodes. As you can see, we get a lovely little uh, node. Now for whatever reason it's called running bond, which I don't entirely understand why. Um, that's kind of a weird output name. Okay, um, that's a thing. So anyway, I'm going to name this just uh, color for the sake of it. I'm just going to call it cuddle, uh, color and I'll label it as color. So there we've got another lovely little output. And uh, this will be very useful. If we go over here, you can see we've got another output. Now this is a little bit cluttery, so I might not always want this. If I want to use this industrial stone brick again, I don't necessarily want to have this color image always available. So I'm going to go over here to my industrial brick height, also because I just kind of want to show you how to do this. So this is a bit more of an advanced feature, but you can actually hide these. So first we're going to need like a little checkbox of basically like show this or not to show this. So I'm going to go over here, I'm going to double click on the graph, Go to Input Properties and click the little plus here. This will add a little true or false value for us. And now I'm just going to go to Boolean. And this is a true or false value. Boolean means true or false. And I'm going to say 
I'm gonna the identifier for it is actually like the name you will use in logic for it. It's like its uh, internal name, its code name that you'll be using on the logical side. And this will make sense in a second when I actually show it to you. So anyway, I'm just gonna do this all lowercase because Substance Designer loves to do these all lowercase. So I'm gonna say use or er, um, expose color. And it has to have underscores, there are no spaces. This is like your code name for it. And then the label is actually what gets shown to the user, in this case you. So uh, expose color. And it'll default to false. So now we've got this little true or false value. How do we use it? The simple answer is we select our little color output and under this visible if section we can actually ask okay is this on or off and the way we do this is a little bit technical and I know this is kind of an advanced feature but I kinda of want to cover it because it's really cool um, this is not something you're gonna use all the time but it's a nice thing to know how to do you type in input and input is like the actual inputs we have for the property and you'll notice it gives me a little uh, exclamation mark saying hey there are errors here but uh, you can even see over here there are errors so anyway our input parameters is accessed by the word input and then you put a little period and period says inside inputs I want to look at something so I want to say input dot this you know whatever thing I'm looking for remember that identifier we had we're gonna type that in so I'm gonna say you or uh, expose color and you'll notice our error goes away. We're saying if uh, the input named expose color is on, because it's a true or false value, we don't have to write down a condition or anything, or if it equals this number or anything like that, because it's already a true or false value. So basically, if this one's on, then we will show this. Otherwise, we'll hide it. And you actually see this. If I save, and I go over here to industrial brick, you'll notice it went away. It's still there, but it's just hidden. And now if I click expose color, you can see it pops a new input on there. This is how a lot of the built-in substance nodes get all their really cool functionality, is that uh, kind of access to low level stuff. So anyway, now we've got our color, and that means most of our base material, uh, the complexity is pretty much gone by this point. Um, most of our, we're just going to get a good base. We're just focusing on a good base, that we can work from later and add stuff to because most of what makes stone look like stone is actually like wear on the surface that is going to be done later with material layering so anyway first we're gonna need to use this lovely color map we've generated so I'm just gonna go to my base material check color for user defined maps and I'm gonna throw down a gradient map gradient map takes a grayscale value and turns it into a color this is similar if you're used to um, oh god, I'm blanking on the name of it, the blender equivalent of this. So anyway, it's, you know, your classic kind of gradient, it's a little color converter style thing, and you can set different colors, if I look down in the bottom right here, I can set what colors I actually want it to be, so I can say like, okay, well, I want it to go between kind of a dark brown, sort of a medium reddish color, and then like a light uh, yellow color, maybe a little bit of orange in there, something like that. Again, you can kind of set up your base colors. Now if I plug that in, you can see we get ourselves some lovely brick colors. And of course, if I randomize this, we get a new set of random colors, random distribution of colors, so we can get some nice stuff. I recommend iterating on a couple of these because you can get some weird results. Like I don't personally like the reddish hue there. So I'm just gonna make this kind of brownish. Maybe it'll look gray. So there we are. Um, you can add a little bit more difference to these to make them look a little more interesting, but in this case, this will be fine. So anyway, we can kind of preview it there. Um, anyway, here we are. So this will work as a decent base for us, color-wise. Uh, I'm gonna add a little bit more interest to this because I feel like it's a little bit flat with just these colors. I want to take advantage of a little bit more of a strong base. So I'm just going to blend this with something else. And what I'm actually going to blend it with is just some form of pattern. And you can play around with all kinds of different patterns, how you actually want to uh, set it up. But one thing I might do is go over here to like, hmm, let's see. 
you can find a map of some description that you like, like I could say vertical noise, and then you can do like a gradient map on it. Gradient maps are super powerful, I love them. And I could say like, okay, well I want the bright areas on this image to be kind of red tinted, and then I want to have some blue tinted areas for the rest of it, so. And then I could simply soft light. And there we get some lovely color tinting or something like that. Again, there are all kinds of different ways to play this. For now, however, I think I'm just going to go in and do that color mapping, except I'm going to just do it with normal height because we get these lovely gradients across the bricks and I kind of want to utilize them. So I'm going to plug this in. So in this case, I don't want it to be super dark because if you make your base color super dark, it'll just look really weird and also kill your lighting, your actual lighting. Like I'll just show you over here. It ends up looking really flat and cartoony, as you can see. Just ends up looking really kind of flat, kind of cartoony, just sort of weird and strange. And also it just kind of looks muddy and not that great. So anyway, I'm gonna go in here in this case, I just want to kind of inject a little bit of color. So I want to say, this area is kind of red-tinged. Uh, red and this other area, over here, on the other side, if it's going to stop lagging for me, is going to be kind of yellow-tinged. So we'll do kind of that gradient. And I can play around with where I want my settings to go. And there we are. Make it a little bit more subtle than that, but because I've brightened it up, it'll start looking a little bit less cartoony, hopefully. And there we are. A little bit less cartoony, looks a little bit nicer. Plays with the shading a little bit better. So anyway, there we are. And this will start us off, but we also are going to need some roughness, because currently our roughness is just gray. So let's actually add a little bit of variation, something to start from. You can just dial in grunge. The built-in grunge map for base color is actually really good. It's BNW Spots 2. So you can actually just go in and say BNW Spots 2, which is really good for, uh, it's actually a really good one for creating different, uh, really good one for just roughness mapping in general. Um, I haven't found that many uses for it besides grunge mapping of some description, but uh, can be useful for like masking and stuff like that. It's a really good map, worth keeping an eye on. But uh, I'm gonna go down here, and instead of like defining the roughness myself, I'm just gonna make the grunge map available. Obviously, I can plug in the same one. And you can see here, just a little bit of grunge adds a lot of detail when you're looking at it at a grazing angle. So this is no grunge. This is a lot of grunge. It just changes how the edge shading happens. And this will be a good base for us later. So, just something to start from. Kind of makes it look more like it's actually been trodden on, and certain areas are smoother than others, and so on. Now I'm going to inject a little bit of my height information in here, because honestly I find it to be uh, kind of weird if, it, if I didn't. So anyway, um, I might actually steal the ambient occlusion, because the ambient occlusion has all these crevices in it. So I'm just going to invert, invert grayscale, or not input grayscale, invert. My keyboard moved. Anyway, there's our invert grayscale. I can invert it, and now we've got a lovely little image. I'm just going to blend this. And I'm just going to, for shits and or giggles, max lighten. So whichever one's brighter. So this will, means a lot, uh, this will mean a lot of crevices and stuff get more, uh, more rough. So anyway, if we look at our roughness map now, you can actually see it's starting to look a little bit better. However, this will work as a base for now. This will just work as a base, and I'm going to swap this out because I kind of want, I want to be able to dial in that detail versus the crevicing, kind of crevice detail. So the amount of noise in the crevices versus the amount of noise in, or uh, the amount of noise from the BNW spots versus how much is from the crevices, and so on. So anyway, that'll be cool. So you can see here, this kind of works as a good base for us. This will just start us off 
get us some basic color. And later, in the next episode, we're going to talk about material layering and actually layering on stuff like dirt and grunge and really getting this to look amazing. Because I know right now it looks kind of basic. But again, this is just meant to be a base for us to work on later. And later on, we'll be able to tweak the settings of this to change our entire material. And this looks, yeah, this is not always going to match up if you don't build it with the whatever you're rendering it in in mind. So anyway, this little preview of its gorgeousness. So anyway, there we are. Peace out. Full of talking. Goodbye.